On today's show, Chinese EV startups are flocking to Silicon Valley, why high voltage hybrids could go extinct, and if Gorilla Glass is good enough for your phone, it's good enough for the Ford GT. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for December 16th of 2015. When billionaire Elon Musk declared he wanted to change the world by making electric cars, he seems to have fired up the imagination of a number of Chinese billionaires. Now we're seeing a parade of high-end EV startups funded by Chinese investors. But what makes this extra newsworthy is that these startups are doing their research and development in Silicon Valley, not in China. We already told you about Faraday Future, which plans to build an assembly plant just outside of Las Vegas. There's another one called Next EV, which plans to unveil its car sometime next year. The old Fisker Automotive Company was bought by yet another Chinese billionaire and is being relaunched as Karma Automotive. And there's another secretive startup called Ativa that is part of the Beijing Automotive Industry Corporation. All these companies are seriously well-funded and are attracting top automotive talent. Check out the links to their websites in today's show notes. They plan to sell most of their cars in China, where the government is ramping up efforts to have 5 million EVs on the road by 2020. Speaking of green cars, could high-voltage mild hybrids go extinct? That's the thinking among suppliers that are developing 48-volt hybrid systems. Any system over 60 volts can electrocute people, so staying below that range is safer. The idea with 48 volts is to take the heavy electrical load off the engine, the AC, the steering, the brakes, and an electric turbocharger that all run off of a small lithium battery. It includes stop-start, regen braking, and electric assist in acceleration. According to Delphi, 48 volt mild hybrids can reach 70% of the fuel efficiency of high voltage hybrids, but at 30% of the cost. It predicts that by 2025, half of all hybrids and 95% of mild hybrids will be 48 volt. On an episode of AutoLine this week, earlier this year, Marianne Wright, the group vice president of engineering at JCI, predicted that 48 volt systems, quote, will make mild hybrids extinct. We'll be back with more right after this. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. There are billions of electronic devices in the world today that use Corning's scratch-proof Gorilla Glass, but there's only one vehicle that currently uses it as a window, the BMW i8. Well, soon, we'll be able to add another to that list. Ford will use Gorilla Glass in the upcoming GT supercar for the windshield, a first for any automaker, the rear window, and the glass panel that separates the passenger compartment from the engine bay. The glass uses a pane of automotive-grade glass as the inner layer, a noise-absorbing thermoplastic inner layer in the middle, and an annealed glass pane as the outer layer. It's anywhere from 25% to 50% thinner than traditional laminated glass, and the application in the Ford GT will save a total of 12 pounds. Ford says the use of the new hybrid glass underscores the company's aggressive goals for innovative engineering and lightweighting technologies that will one day benefit all Ford customers. So don't be surprised to see Gorilla Glass in your future Ford car or truck. And speaking of Ford, it's leery about letting Apple or Google into its cars. And now it just teamed up with the software company Pivotal to help it become a more agile software developer. This will also help speed up its software development time and simplify how customers use technology to access vehicles and services. This includes the recently announced Sync Connect, which will allow users to lock and unlock doors, remote start the vehicle, check fluid levels, and locate where they're parked. These are just some of the initial features. Ford says it will grow with software enhancements. Sync Connect will make its global debut in the new Ford Escape, which launches this spring and roll out to other vehicles from there. Coming up next, a look at Infinity's newest redesigns 
and Rinspeed's autonomous I-8. True love will find you in the end. Hi, Dad. When you're committed to the job, but don't give up and your tires can't be weak in the knees. True love will find you Let go. in the end. Durable, dependable Firestone tires. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. Infiniti just refreshed its Q50 sedan and QX60 crossover. The Q50, which is Infiniti's best-selling vehicle in North America, retains its look but comes with a number of new features. Three turbo engines are now available, including an all-new 3-liter V6 that's offered with 300 or 400 horsepower. The engine will eventually be used in other vehicles in the company's lineup. Other new features for the Q50 include an updated version of Infiniti's direct adaptive steering and an upgraded suspension system. The new Q50 goes on sale next year. The QX60's styling has been updated, including a new grille and headlights. Its suspension has been retuned for a smoother ride, and it's available with a number of new safety and infotainment features. The new QX60 goes on sale next year. Rinspeed, a Swiss company that makes wild concept cars, just revealed a self-driving car called the Etos. If it looks familiar, that's because it's a modified version of the BMW i8. One of its highlights is its steering wheel from ZF TRW that's able to retract and fold into the dash. The interior also features two 21-inch HD monitors to display content. The exterior is equipped with eight HD cameras to monitor its surroundings. For more info about the car, look for a link in today's transcript. The Etos will make its debut at the Consumer Electronics Show next month in Las Vegas. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching, and join us again tomorrow for the latest news in the automotive industry.